remain one of the top 10 wedding photographers in the world. A legend behind the lens. World-renowned author. The one. The only. Kevin Cup. We've got clients coming. Can you please go out and sweep the front of the office? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. All right. Thank you. Last season on Post Pro, we were privileged to hang out in Kevin Kubota's studio office as he took us through a journey of editing, post-processing, funky shirts, and Betty Crocker cake mix. This season, it's a whole new adventure. We're back in Kevin's studio, along with the surrounding beauty of Bend, Oregon, for new escapades in marketing, business, lighting, workflow, branding, everything it takes for you to become a photo pro. We are now going to start our new season with coverage of Lightroom 4's new features. If you guys are as excited about Lightroom 4 as I am, then you're probably a geek like I am. And uh, you know, who gets excited about new features and software? Well, we do, right? That's why we're here, you and me. We're excited about this. So Lightroom 4 has quite a few new features and in the next couple of episodes, we're going to cover some of the most important new features and more importantly, how you actually integrate them into your workflow. Now, if you remember in last season, we talked about in Post Pro our Lightroom workflow. I covered that at the beginning of that. If you didn't catch it, you can still get it. Go back, look it up, and learn about our workflow system using Lightroom 3. So with Lightroom 4 and some of the new features, we're going to talk about how to integrate those into that same workflow. The workflow hasn't changed really uh, in, in the way that you do things but some of the features, some of the tools that you use are better. Uh, they make things faster, easier, more better. So I'm gonna talk about that. So on my screen here, we're in Lightroom 4. And if you look on the right side, we have all these adjustments in Quick Develop. These are the same adjustments that we have full control over in the Develop mode. I'm gonna switch to Lightroom 3, just so you can take a little flashback and see where we were. Those adjustments were their exposure, recovery, fill light, and black. You also had brightness, of course, contrast, clarity, saturation, vibrance. All those are, are there in Lightroom 4, but they're a little different and they actually affect different parts of the image in a better way. Now, I still think they could be organized a little more uh, logically, but that's just the geek in me coming out. It's still a lot better than it was before. So, let's take a look. First of all, you'll notice exposure. Now, remember, I've always talked in my workshops and in the last season in, in Post Pro about how exposure was a little counterintuitive. A lot of photographers think of exposure just like on your camera where you want to brighten the image up so you bump the exposure. Well, in Lightroom 3, that really wasn't the best way to just brighten up an image because it would tend to push the highlights off the scale. It affected the highlights more so than just the midtones which is what you kind of think exposure is going to do. So I would suggest using exposure to only control the highlights, to set your highlight point, and then going in and using brightness to bring the midtones. Well, now they've changed it to make it a bit more intuitive, and it makes sense. The exposure now affects purely the midtone values in the image. So you can use it to just brighten things up a little bit without blowing out your highlights or changing your shadow value, values too much. So exposure, and we're going to look at our histogram up here. So let's grab ourselves an image. And I'm going to go to develop mode, shortcut D for develop. And if you look at your histogram, you have some good information. As I hover my mouse over the very left of the histogram, you'll see it highlights the blacks. And that slider down below here also becomes highlighted automatically. So the blacks will affect this part of the image. The shadows will affect the quarter tones a little bit higher up. Exposure now is purely in the middle of the range of the tones. As I go further to the right, the highlights will be next. And then at the far extreme, the whites, which are the brightest, brightest whites in the image. So they've broken it down into five segments, each of which you can control separately. Now, why is this cool? It's cool because you can see a very noticeable difference in the way that uh, you can pull highlight detail and maintain midtones perfectly in Lightroom 4. Uh, it's much improved over Lightroom 3, and I'm going to show you back to back how different that looks. 
So the approach now, which is a little different than before, would be to first of all, look at your, your mid-tone values with your exposure and to play with that slider, get it where you want, and then pull in your highlights and your shadows and get it all uh, looking good so there's detail everywhere. But effectively, you're gonna walk through it in a more logical manner. So let's take a look, first of all, back at Lightroom 3. And I'll pull up the same image in both. I'm gonna develop mode with this image here. And here's a typical example. And I'm gonna turn on my highlight warning here on my histogram. You can see up at the top right, if I just click this triangle, it'll lock on the highlight warning to show me areas on the image that are blown out, all right? No information. Now in Lightroom 3, what I would have to do if I use my recovery slider, which is the highlight recovery, even cranking that all the way to the right, I still can't get all of that red information, that red blob out, right? I mean, I still can't recover all that highlight. If I use my exposure now, which is the only other tool I have to affect that highlight area, and start sliding it down until that red disappears, look what happens to the image. Ew. It's like gone, black, muddy. There's not a lot I can do. I'd have to then push the fill light up and the brightness up, and then the reds start to come back, and then the image still looks kind of muddy in the midtones. There's really no great way to get everything in register looking good. But now let's go to Lightroom 4 and look at that same image. So let me pull up that same image here. This is a raw file that I'm starting with. And I'll take it into develop mode. And I'll turn on my highlight warning so we can see the same red blown out highlight information. And now, instead of using exposure or the recovery tool, I'll go directly to my highlights. Now you'll notice too that the sliders are now centered, all on zero. Before, they would be kind of at random places and it didn't really make sense why it started at 25 and some started at zero and all that. So now they all start at zero, so you can either have less or more. Makes more sense, right? Less or more, starting from zero. So first things first, I wanna bring those highlights and the whites back into register. So I'm gonna to go to my white slider here, drag it down, and I can go all the way, and then it doesn't quite get it all the way, so I'll go to the highlights, which is the next tonal range, grab that slider, and scoot it to the left. Oh, look at that. Just a little touch of that, and it's gone. The red blob of death is gone. But the midtones in the image look great. Look at that. There's nothing wrong with those midtones, and in fact, I could still bump them up if I wanted to using either my shadow control or my exposure control, which brings the midtones but doesn't affect the highlights. Now look how beautiful that looks. Beautiful detail, contrasty, lots of shadow information, the highlights are all there. Something completely different than the result I got in Lightroom 3. Now that's a significant change and worth getting excited about. Okay, the next thing you want to know about these new adjustments after you've mastered the exposure, contrast, highlights, shadow whites, and blacks. Very easy to adjust, very easy to figure out now. The clarity slider has been improved. Now clarity was there to help you add a little Christmas, take away the haziness around the edges of the image. And that was definitely uh, something that occurred when you had backlight in a, an image like this, for example. Now the clarity is even improved because before when you crank that clarity up too much, you'd start to get uh, this dark line kind of halo around the image. So you couldn't really crank it up. Well, now they've improved the clarity so I can really take it up. Start to get a little bit of that highlight information coming back there, which is just fine. I can still bring it back down with my highlight control. But the clarity now, I can crank it up, adding more crispness, a little more detail information there into the image. It really works well. And I'm gonna show you in a second how the clarity can be used to create almost a pseudo HDR look on your images that uh, actually is much more natural and much faster than using some of the plugins to do this effect. All right, so now that looks pretty good. Let's take a look at one more image, another good example of where these new tools will benefit you and your workflow. So I'm gonna grab an image like this, which is typical. You shoot at a wedding, uh, and this is not actually uh, one of my best pieces of work, but it's just an image I pulled out from a job to show you inside and outside, because that's a typical problem that we face. You shoot inside, outside, and you want detail both ways, right? So 
here we go. We have nice exposure for the inside of this room, but outside the windows, we can see it's a little blown out. There's not a lot of detail. And what I can do, take my highlight slider, bring it down, okay? And look how much I can go, and it still looks natural. And if I grab my white slider and bring that down, I can pretty much go all the way down and it still looks completely natural. Another way to adjust, if you prefer, is just to move your mouse right here up over the histogram over the general area that you want to adjust and then you can click and hold and just drag left or right. And it's the same thing as dragging the slider down below, but sometimes people like that because they can actually pinpoint an area on the histogram they want to work on. All right. If I want to open up these shadows and the blacks here, I just hover my mouse right there and push them up to open the shadows. So look at that. We've got like an HDR looking image with detail outside in the bright sky and detail inside under natural light, which is really something pretty amazing. And speaking of amazing, I hope you're shooting raw. And I hope you're shooting raw because that's the way you're going to get detail everywhere. And I'm going to talk about that a little more in our next episode. Some really cool things that you need to know about shooting raw. Not in the raw, but raw. You know what I mean? Not shoot in the raw, but shoot raw. Okay, let's crank our clarity up just a little bit. Add a little bit of crispness to the image. And it's looking beautiful. If I hit the backslash key, I can see before. Ouch, look at that. And after. Look how much information we've rescued from outside this room with these new controls. Amazing. I'm pretty excited about that. All right. Another thing you need to know is Lightroom 4 has changed the way auto works. Now, some of you like to use auto tone. Auto tone simply means Lightroom will look at your image, decide where the highlights, the shadows, and midtones will be, kind of like auto exposure in your camera. So if you messed up your exposure, Lightroom can take over and say, hey, I think it should be this, a little brighter, a little darker. And sometimes that's great. If you have exposures that are all over the place, uh, you're not really happy with what your camera's doing, the auto tone can fix it, but it works a little differently than it did in Lightroom 3. In Lightroom 3, when you click on auto tone, it would effectively manipulate all of the sliders to give you what it thought was a good image. And it worked pretty well. In Lightroom 4, Auto-Tone only will manipulate the exposure. Okay, it doesn't touch the highlight, the shadow, and all that. It only looks at the exposure, the mid value. So it's good to know. I'm not sure yet if that's better or worse than it was before, because the other one actually gave you more control, uh, more automatic control over highlights in black point. So um, it's kind of up in the air whether it's an improvement or not, but it's different and you need to know that. If you're used to using auto, now it will only affect the exposure. It actually is pretty cool though in the way that it works now because you can create presets that will actually manipulate the whites or the shadows and the blacks and they will work the same way on every image, which was not the case in Lightroom 3 because auto would randomly adjust those factors. Now I mentioned earlier that you can get a pseudo HDR kind of an effect with some of these new controls. So let's take an image uh, that might be typical of that. This is an image shot in Italy. Kind of a interesting perspective on the front of an old church here. And this is the original image. And I want to bring out detail everywhere. And the first thing I'm going to do is to approach my exposure. Now I don't really need to have my warnings on or off. There's nothing that's completely blown out. But I do want to see more of this sky right here. So I'm going to immediately go to my whites and I'll just hover it right here over the whites on the histogram and drag to the left kind of bring that down a little bit you'll notice my white slider went down as well then I'll grab the highlights scoot that to the left again I'm bringing a little more color a little more detail in the sky where I was losing my blue okay and I will open up my shadows and blacks just a wee little bit. Okay, then I go to clarity and crank that sucker all the way up, all the way up to 100. And look at that. You've got this great textural feeling that almost looks like an HDR, one of those effects, but not quite over the top like some of those plug-in effects, where I've got now 
beautiful information in the shadows, beautiful information in the highlights, nice kind of crispy texture without being over the top process looking. I can add a little more vibrance to the image, my vibrance slider. Now vibrance, if you're not familiar with it, when it's like saturation, but it doesn't affect the skin tones as much. So it's great for like blue skies and greens without making the reds overly orange looking. So I use that a lot when there's people in the picture. But I like the effect of vibrance here. All right, so now let's take a look at that. If we go to the original before and the after. Look at how it pops now. The, the color, the detail, the tonal range, much improved with just a few slick clicks of the new adjustment tools. That's it for this episode of Photo Pro. And you know what? This season we want to get everybody involved. So if you have a great image that you've enhanced with these new tools and you're excited about it and you found some cool way to pull information out of an image that you thought was gone maybe, go ahead and share it with us. Upload an image, share it with us, share it with the world, and let's see what these new tools are doing for you. So thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you next time. I'm Kevin Kubota, Shaka Bra. Don't forget to tune in next week. We're gonna talk about one of the other cool new features in Lightroom 4, and that's the new DNG RAW file format. Did you ever wish you could go back and redo some of the things you thought you did well? Well, in a sense, you can. I'm gonna show you all the new cool things about DNG and what you need to know to incorporate this into your Lightroom workflow. Photo Pro was brought to you by White House Custom Color. Like the music? Special thanks to Triple Scoop Music. Frame Network giveaways are brought to you by B&H. Head to giveaways.framenetwork.com for your chance to win. Find out more about the equipment used in this episode on framenetwork.com.